Hello, hello everyone. Today I'm going to be featuring the Holland, the European Tier 10 destroyer. And probably the best torpedo boat in the game right now. Also one of the few destroyers in the game that can actually effectively defend themselves against carriers. There are very few indeed and this is a game with a CV. More importantly, this game has a pretty nasty division on the enemy team, a small land and an Udaloy in the division. That is of course a combination of two very fast destroyers, one with radar and one with just excellent long-range ballistics on the guns. So I have to play fairly carefully in the beginning, because if I run into them, I risk being radared and just farmed to death by both of them. Especially since Holland, unlike most destroyers, does not have access to smoke, and in terms of speed, it's not particularly fast either. So you have to respect the constraints that you're playing with. I launch preemptive torps, usually ships want to sail behind the island in front of me, and uh, Holland has such fast torpedoes, the fastest in the game, as well as having 15 kilometers of range. No, I do not run torpedo acceleration, I think you're giving up a huge advantage in, uh, of the ship if you run torpedo acceleration. 15 kilometers of range is excellent, and it tends to give you a lot of unintended torpedo hits on ships that probably weren't expecting your t torpedoes to hit them, or they weren't expecting them to reach the enemy so fast. I'm not pushing into the sea camp because usually when the uh, DD sits in a camp if you don't have hydro or radar well you're not really accomplishing a whole lot there. You're just sitting there and then the enemy sits there and you're ba basically neutralized. This is fine if you don't expect to have a big impact on a game but generally my goal is always to try to carry a game to a win and I think me as a resource, I feel very wasted. Especially as a DD who can go around, can flank, can spot, can give information to the team instead. The small land is spotted on the other part of the map, so I know that the Udalo is probably there as well. So if I do get spotted, as I do now, I know it's in fact the Asashio. And I'm trying to get vision of him, and he's in fact playing far too aggressive, pushing directly into me. So I instantly engage. Holland's DPM is excellent. I angle away a bit because I'm afraid that the Montana will shoot me, which she does, but slowing down and angling away caused most of his shells to miss. The Asashio smokes up, and while we don't have access to radar, I saw exactly where he smoked up, and no one else is actually here to spot me, so I'm just gonna sit here and farm and farm and farm, scoring hits every now and then, scoring another fire there as well, and I will probably eventually grind him down or force him out of the smoke. My fire burns down the Asashio, uh, and I actually land a torpedo hit on the Georgia, which was my initial torpedo target. And here's a good example of having that extra range. You see that the Moyne heading down towards B? Uh, well, he probably isn't expecting these torpedoes to quite reach that far or to show up that quickly, so he actually ends up eating one torpedo as well. That's a good example of why I think torpedo acceleration is wasted, because it doesn't really reduce the reaction time that much, and um, more importantly, the additional range is very effective against radar ships. My Mogami sadly gets himself killed behind the island, so they trade back one kill. Uh, they do have a Montana here on the flank, and he is all alone. By killing the DD, I basically have free reign to try to push up on this Montana and try to get some sort of pressure in. He's playing with his speed, so I don't really want to give up the game and let him know that I'm actually targeting him. If I launch torpedoes while he's playing with his speed, it's very hard to predict what he's going to do. I expect him to be leaving the flank, either by reversing, uh, which I think he was planning to, but then he changed his mind and now it looks like he's accelerating. So I predict he's going to accelerate and just turn fully away because he realizes that alone on a flank against a torpedo boat like the Howland, he, ha he has nothing to do. I predict the full turn and I preemptively launch my torpedoes where I see his ship turning. And he's doing exactly what I predicted. And that's generally smart, but you don't want to, basically if you're in this battleship's position, you don't want to signal your intentions this clearly. For an experienced player like me, this was blindingly obvious, and my torpedo prediction is 
almost as perfect as a torpedo prediction can be. And even these Holland torpedoes, even though they don't do a lot of damage, landing 9 out of 10 of them is a huge chunk of damage. And especially since I am running Jersey, which is by far the best captain for the Holland or for the European DD line in general, Engine this also gives me faster torpedo reload thanks to the 8 torpedoes proccing the special ability of the captain. The DD is capping C, so there's no point in me for going back into C. He should be getting that cap absolutely for free. And in killing the Asashio, the enemy doesn't really have any torpedo power left. Uh, Udaloi and Smallland are both good gunboats, very good against DDs, but honestly not that strong against battleships. So as long as my team just plays it cool and don't doesn't do any panicky moves, um, we should have no issues basically collapsing this flank and slowly turning this game into our favor. I keep chasing the Montana, not just because I want to get my torps off on him, but I have a small ants behind me behind the island, and I'm keeping him spotted for the small ants. That guy just ate a bunch of torpedoes and used his damage con, which means he's especially vulnerable to all sorts of HE spam. Also, getting rid of a tier 10 battleship on the flank means that my Zumo, well, he's already going a bit too far on the side, uh, but he can reposition more towards the center. He does have a fire on him, and the Smolensk is still farming him. I'm tempted to shoot him to finish him off, but on the other hand, I don't really want to give up the game. I don't want them to know where I am. Torpedoes don't really show up on the minimap, but if you shoot and you get spotted on the minimap, well, everyone who has any sort of sense will realize where you are, and then the carrier will probably send planes my way, and the mine might push in to radar me. Basically, even the small end might start hunting me. So it would limit my tactical ability a lot to give up my position just to get the kill on the Montana. Although in hindsight, getting that kill on Montana might have given me a pretty impressive final score. But that's hindsight talking. Des Moines is pushing towards the center. I don't want to get too close to him. I'm not sure if he's actually radaring. I think there's a high chance he might be running radar right now, so I'm keeping a respective distance. Heavy American cruisers have a 10 kilometer radar distance, so staying outside of that 10 kilometer gap is important if you suspect they might be radaring. The reason I think he's radaring is because, well, they were just fighting my DD. My Z46 pushed into um, Des Moines, Smallland, and Udalai. Not the best choice. And there's also a Smolensk there, so I think there's a high chance of radar. I'm trying to ping my Izumo to try him to basically get into a better position. Um, the Izumo is the classic case that I've been trying to argue against in my battleship commentaries, and that is the importance of central positioning. Uh, the Izumo is so far away from everything relevant that it will take him multiple minutes to get anywhere close to a position where he can actually effectively use his guns. He has basically zoned himself out of all the action. And considering we've already lost a third of our team, um, a battleship on this flank being completely useless is an issue. I land torpedoes on the Des Moines, which is good, because that means his damage con will be down, and with a carrier in the game and potentially a small ensk also farming him, the lack of damage con should hurt him. The Lexington is where I predicted he would be. Carriers have this tendency to, to never move during the first couple of minutes. Sometimes they never move all game, they're the only class that can get away with it. Um, and obviously this was something I was hoping to potentially punish because Lexington's information gain is very powerful against our team right now, especially very powerful against me. So a Lexington playing this passive and basically just focusing on striking is a prime target for me. I close the distance, of course. Um, not There's an Iva pushing this way. I want to potentially catch the Iva off guard. And I do want to make sure that if the Lexington survives the torpedoes, which is probable, because once again, Holland torpedoes don't deal that much damage, uh, I want to be able to gun him down if he tries to run for it. The Des Moines does actually go down to the Smolensk, so that part is working as planned. Hopefully my Izumo will rejoin the battle, and my carrier will provide some vision. The problem is, though, that my team is kind of pushing in. Uh, ideally, my team would have recognized the advantage we had on this flank and the way we were collapsing this flank, and they would have played safe. But, in fact, my Iowa and my Musashi have both pushed in on the eighth side, and they pushed into a numerically superior enemy for no real reason, and they've all gotten themselves killed. So this game, this flank is just costing me a lot of map control and a lot of time, because I didn't expect them to do that. 
I don't want to shoot the, the Lexington yet because I want to see what the Iowa does. Can I get some juicy torpedoes off on him? But the Lexington instantly sends rocket planes my way, so I decide to finish him off with my with my guns. I activate the defensive AA, set the sector as well, um, making sure that the planes die ASAP so he can't keep me spotted. The AP kills off the Lexington very, very quickly, and I try to get in some torpedoes to get a kill on the Iowa as fast as possible. However, I see the Udalo in the minimap is actually pushing, pushing this way, and the Iowa is going behind the island, so I'm trying to get a 1 versus 1 against the Udaloi, and I actually managed to position myself in such a way. You see how the Iowa is behind the island, uh, and the small island is basically too far away, so even though I'm in the middle of kind of four enemy ships, I'm only fighting one of them effectively at a time. And that's exactly what I want. And that allows me to take down the Udaloi, who was a bit too eager. Um, people tend to underestimate Holland's Hull gunpower. It's actually quite an efficient gunboat. So I take down the carrier and half of the enemy destroyer division. So this gives us, gives us a significant amount of points. And of course, having the enemy Iovan Smallland waste time in our their spawn now, um, as well as killing their carrier, should give us a significant spotting advantage. However, looking at the minimap, I can see that my Montana, if you look on H2, my Montana is charging into a Yamato, Georgia, Albemarle and Brindisi. So for some reason my team is incredibly keen on rushing the enemy on the enemy's strongest flank. This will mean that this is going to be a very hard game indeed. I pop torpedoes on the Iowa. I think he's going to turn in and fight my Izumo, because if he keeps going straight like this he's going to give a lot of broadside to him. And then we're going to close in on the small land. I have a Smolensk pushing down from the south, but more importantly the Smallland only has 11k health. Well, he started healing, but my health advantage is still significant. As always, when you're fighting enemy gunboats, you want to be kiting away enemy from enemy gunboats. Win. So note that as soon as this engagement is about to start, I'm going to start angling away. My torpedoes are very, very good on the Iowa, and I actually get kind of fortunate getting a detonation on him, which gives me three achievements at once. I catch Smallland as well, and I instantly start kiting away. If you look at the minimap, you can see the angle at which I'm sailing. I'm sailing as sharply away from the small land as I can, while still keeping both of my turrets on him. So even though the small land is technically a superior gunboat, I'm using the kiting to my advantage, and I manage to take him down as well, which gives me the Kraken. However, that A flank, well, they have kept pushing in, and they have all managed to die. So even though I have five kills with more than seven minutes remaining and a fair chunk of damage as well, this is a large uphill battle. The, the enemy team has been saying a lot of stuff in game. Maybe some of my Russian speaking viewers can translate some of the stuff, but um, the Sasha I killed, um, I think he called me a cheater or something, or and I think the Lexington wanted me banned because I torpedoed him. Basically, a lot of interesting in-game conversations going on. I'm sure one of my viewers is going to provide a translation of that. I'm going to try to push into the cap. Uh, I'm a bit worried about the Georgia push, uh, spotting me, but there is a smoke left over from my Smolensk. So I'm thinking that maybe I can just push into the smoke and use the smoke as cover to turn around in case the Georgia is still waiting around the corner. I put, so launch preemptive torpedoes on the Brindisi because I think he's going to uh, angle out. He's not going to keep going straight, he's going to turn out a bit, is my prediction. I angle away though, in case he rushes me, I want to be able to disengage. But it turns out the Brindisi is doing exactly as I predicted. He is turning out a bit wary about pushing straight into a cap, as they usually are. And that's actually going to cost him. Two tor torpedoes on the Brindisi gives me my sixth kill and another tick of that torpedo reload. Giving me even faster torpedo reload. My Zuma, who has been out of position basically the entire game by going too far away on the flank. Well, we're down to a 3 versus 4. This is, however, still winnable because, well, we have me, a Holland, a torpedo boat, and we have a carrier. So if the Zuma just plays it safe, he's kind of been playing it safe all this game. Uh, playing very, very far back. So, so if he just maintains that playstyle and doesn't play too aggressively and allows me to just torpedo these guys, uh, this is going to absolutely still be a win. I launched some preemptive torps on the Georgia, because the Georgia is charging in there to help his friendly Georgia mate. 
But all my Izuma needs to do right now is just slow down and kill the Jojo in front of him. If the Izuma slows down and just takes a fair 1 versus 1, well, he's got a huge health advantage. Jojo has 18k, Izuma was full HP with 80k. Um, this should be an easy 3 versus 3 that I can then snowball into an even bigger advantage. However, the problem with World of Warships is that your teammates rarely do what you hope that they would. And my Izuma has decided, well, he's been sitting far long, uh, sitting back too long. Now he's going to absolutely charge in. I call target on the Albemarle, hoping my carrier can finish him off, but that's also going to be a bit of an issue where my carrier is basically struggling to kill that 2k health cruiser for almost the entire game. Um, I ping the Izuma to get back multiple times. Please get back. The George only has 5,000 health. If he pushes in there, he risks being crossfired by both of them or basically just killed off without getting either of the kill. So I'm just telling him to slow down, take it easy, give me some time. I'll basically, let me use my advantage. I have a lot of torpedo power right now. Let me use it to help the team. I can't push any further, Georgia uh, six came concealment and with the Georgia, two Georgias in front of me, all that secondary firepower could be a huge threat. One of the Georgias sails around the corner, so I instantly open up on this Georgia, trying to finish him off as quickly as possible. At this point I'm hoping that, well, if the Izumo absolutely has to go in, at least he will get the ram on the other Georgia, like if he's actually committed, he doesn't want to let me help at all, maybe he will at least get the ram, but you probably saw that volley right there, the Izumo is shooting the angled Georgia, and of course, by shooting, the Georgia can just sail, of, sail right by the Izumo, and absolutely blap his broadside. I see the Yamato on the minimap is actually pushing north as well, so I'm about to get boxed in. And my Izuma, who was just full HP, has managed to kill himself in only a few minutes. This means, well, I'm about to get boxed in from both sides, and we only have three minutes remaining. So I decide it's time to do a daring move, and I hope the Georgia has turned in sharply enough that I can catch him. I hope his speed boost is still active and he's basically right around the corner. Sadly, he is still four kilometers away and his speed boost has, I think, ran out. I'm not sure. It might still be active, but maybe he just slowed down. I'm tempted to launch both sets of torpedoes, but if the Georgia had turned in and I only landed one, then that would have been a disaster because I need to land multiple torps to kill him. I pop the my last heal and I try to close in, try to get the kill on this guy. I line up the torpedoes. As you saw, four torpedoes was not enough. I know I need to land a total of six torpedoes because his nose is so saturated. I land three and kill him. However, he gets his back turret in on me and manages to kill me off. So, and meanwhile, my Zeppelin is still trying to kill this Albemarle that has 2000 health. Here's a small spoiler. I think he eventually actually succeeds, but he has no chance of killing the Yamato. So this game, despite my best efforts, <laughs> amusingly ends in a defeat. A devastating strike, Confederate, First Blood, Kraken and High Caliber. 328,000 damage and uh, as far as my viewers could tell, this is the global world record damage for the Holland. Um, the closest anyone got on C and Russia were less than 300k and on EU someone had managed to get 319k. Um, if someone proves him wrong, that's very possible, but as far as we can tell right now, this is the Holland world record damage. 8 kills, 13 planes shot down, 34 torpedo hits and uh, 1 objective capture and of course 12 floods and 3 fires. 8 kills, but... <laughs> not enough to win the game. The team score, well, it does tell a fairly brutal story. Uh, 2,200 base XP on the losing team. Of course, with the 50% modifier, um, this would have been at least a 3.3k base XP game. Had I killed the Montana, actually, had, had I just gotten some time to work, this might have even been a 3.6, 3.7k, 400,000 damage game. But, well, you... You don't always get what you want. That's just the way it works. In hindsight, I wish I would have launched all my torps on the Izuma, or sorry, on the Georgia, but obviously I couldn't know if it was going to turn in or not.
Had I launched all my torps and he would have turned in and just eaten three or four on the nose and then just rushed me down and killed me, I would have looked like a complete fool. So it was do or die, had to take a risk and the risk really didn't pay off. Detail report wise, well, the majority of the damage is of course um, torpedoes, 273,000, a bit of HE, a bit of AP. Um, I did get 12 floodings, but not really too much damage out of them. I did an additional almost 50,000 spotting by hunting down the Montana on that flank, making sure he couldn't run away after my torpedo salvo. And I did tank about 33,000 damage. This game, even though it shows that um, some teams are just very, very hard to carry, this game does showcase all the strengths of the Holland, which is an excellent torpedo boat thanks to the ridiculously narrow spreads and the incredibly fast torpedoes and also an excellent gunboat taking out the Sashio, the Udaloi and the Smallland. Basically I took down all three of their destroyers, I took down their carrier and then even torpedoed a fair few cruisers and battleships. But <laughs> some games, some games man, you just can't win. Let me show you guys my recommended build for this ship. Right, as usual, let me start with the modules. Not really much to talk about, you can't change any of the consumables, which um, in a way I guess is a good thing, because there is no bad build here. Upgrade-wise, you do want to run the turret and torpedo survival, especially important on the Holland since you only have two turrets, and losing one of them means losing half your DPS. Um, engine boost mod 1 for increased engine duration. If you don't have this, I would say just run the engine room protection. The defensive AA duration modifier is honestly fairly useless because um, either you kill the planes during the defensive AA or they just leave it. There's rarely any in between. Rarely have I been in a situation where I wished, oh man, if only I had uh, more action time. The reduced reload can be useful, so I'm not saying this is necessarily a bad choice, but I would probably run engine room protection instead. Third upgrade. Torpedo Tubes Mod 1, absolutely. This bumps your torpedoes up to a pretty damn impressive, I think, 90.3 knots. Uh, and of course, it does reduce the chance of those tubes being broken. Fourth upgrade, Propulsion Mod. Your acceleration is, a, or sorry, your rudder shift is actually very, very good. And your turning circle is nice. So the acceleration helps you when, while well, you do situations like against the small end, basically stopping, waiting for him to catch up and then kiting away. Better concealment and finally Torpedo Tubes Mod 2 because we are building this fully for torpedoes. Captain wise, Jerzy Swirsky is by far the best captain for the Holland. Uh, you get his improved Adrenaline Rush, you get his improved AA and you do get that Torpedo Reload Expert which cuts down that reload time on those torpedoes by 5% for every 8 torpedoes landed. Basically he synergizes extremely well with the Holland. Build-wise, priority target, followed by last stand, followed by survivability expert, followed by concealment expert. You always build for survivability first in a destroyer, because staying alive is what allows you to deal damage. After that, I would build torpedo armament. This is a flat out 10% buff. After that, you can build adrenaline rush and the last four points into RPF because it just gives you so much useful information of what the enemy is doing from where they're coming and so forth. I have seen some builds that instead run BFT and preventive maintenance. I'd, I'm not going to say it's a bad build because once again, the gunpowder on this ship is quite good. But personally, I find RPF to be far more useful, especially in situations where you're facing ships like Smallland and you don't know where they are. So he's, oh, and with the upcoming um, Russian cruisers that are able to stealth radar, I will highly, highly recommend RPF. This thing is just gonna rise in value the more stealth radar is added to the game. Flag wise, I do recommend running at least the flooding chance, and fire chance flags, uh, detonation, speed, and healing. And the AA flag is actually quite useful because, as mentioned, the Holland is one of the few destroyers that tends to have very, very good anti air. That was my Holland commentary. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys had a good time. And as always, I will talk to you guys next time.